Blaring Out show. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and I'm here with John McLaughlin. How you doing today, John? Going? I'm doing well. Singer, songwriter, piano player, you are a genius. <laughs> you are. You started taking lessons at four years old, correct? Four years old, yep. Did you want to do that? I totally wanted to do it. There were, there were many times when I changed my mind, but I was all in. You know, four years old, I was like, let's go. So. And your parents never had to twist your arm. They, they had to twist my arm so many times. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, when I started out, you know, I, my, my older brother's doing it, my, my older sister's playing, my dad was a musician. So, you know, so I fell right in line. And then, you know, 10 years later, I'm in high school, still taking piano lessons, and I'm, I'm having second thoughts. So. Now, what was your youth like in Indiana? I would say normal. It was, uh, you know, a nice, slow pace. I grew up in a town called Anderson, Indiana, and um, which is, a you know, Smaller town in the Midwest, in Indiana. Did a lot of practicing, you know, not a, not a whole lot of distractions out there. At what point in your life did you realize, like, hey, music can be a career for me? Well, I always wanted to do music. I, I always wanted to be Billy Joel as long as I could remember. And then, you know, in high school, I kind of stepped away from it. Um, you know, it wasn't like the coolest thing to, to play piano in high school, so I thought that's actually not true kids stay in the piano lessons it was it was about the time of uh, latter high school when I, I, I uh, started to get into playing a church started to play some church music with the, with a youth band and I, it kind of like opened up like this whole other side of music of like playing by ear and not at that point I was just was classical you know and so at that point you know I started writing for the first time and once I started you know writing and playing at these tiny little coffee houses you know that's when i was thinking you know like i could i could do this you know i only made like 20 bucks tonight but i could i can live off of 20 bucks what were some of the highlights of recording indiana for you uh, an overall highlight is just you know that it was the first time i was able to um really make really sit down and this was you know all i'm supposed to do you know beforehand I'm making them in the middle of classes and or I'm I'm working with my own budget, you know, things like that. So you have all these limitations, time limitations, financial limitations, whatever. And um and in this case, you know, you get the best players, you get the best studio, you get you spend all your time on it. You know, you got you got however long you need to make this record. And that was really freeing to be able to do that and to be able to work with uh Jamie Houston, Greg Wells, like amazing amazing musician and they had the record company tell you hey we need you to co-write with these people how did you feel about that well at first when they when they talked about co-writing um, I'd never done it before and so I said you know I'd rather not yeah thank you and um, <laughs> and they were they were fine they were like fine just write on your own for a while and then I called them back and I was like you know a couple days later I was like you know this is I'm being dumb I'm being a dumb young musician you know we'll, we'll do some uh, We'll do some co-writing. So they set up some co-writing sessions. You know, some were tough and some were amazing. I mean, overall, it was it was a great experience. What event was it in your life that inspired you to write Beautiful Disaster? That is an amazing song. Oh, thank you. It, it was, I wrote that song with Jamie Houston. It was actually the first day that we, that we met and we wrote that song. And, and um, I think that kind of what put it in, in my, my head to write this song was on my way out to L.A. from Indiana. Um, I'm in the in the airport. I'm in those you know one of those airport magazine candy yeah. stores that I love. So I go in there and I'm, I'm looking at the at the magazines and um, and I see this uh, the cover of this magazine with this really really skinny model on the cover mm -hmm. and I, I and I do like a double take and I look back and I think I'm looking at you know the headline thinking surely it's something like you know models are are getting way too skinny what are we going to do you yeah know, th something like that and um you know it didn't say anything about it it was just a regular you know this it, they were it was so skinny this model and i, I was thinking i kind of it was discouraging a little bit because i was thinking you know all these people are going to see this all these young girls and it just kind of got me thinking about it and then w once we got out with jamie he was all about writing you know going with that now you have a song in your album called praying to the wrong god what is that song about well it's funny that song um the the uh the title of the song is obviously very you know eye-catching but really the the uh as deep as this as this song gets it's just it, it's about just that time 
at, you know, at the beginning of a relationship or just at the beginning of a, you know, infatuation. Yeah. Where you just, you realize you're like, okay, I'm spending way too much of my energy and my time on, on this girl, you know, or, or a girl to guy or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's really as deep as it gets. Tell me what it was like working on the Disney film Enchanted with Patrick Dempsey. Yeah. They called right after we were done with the record. They called and they said, you know, would you like to record this song for the for this film? And I, you know, of course, we were like, great, yeah, we'll do whatever, you know. And um, so we, we fly out to New York and we record this song, we go home, and then they call back and they say, how about you just be in it for the, you know, and just sing the song in this scene. It's this big ballroom scene. They built this like amazing, you know, million dollar ballroom in this studio. Sweet. They have like a couple hundred dancers and extras and everybody's just like all done up and um, I'm up there on the stage in my tux and I've got the microphone and I just, I got the best seat in the house. I just, take after take, I just got to watch Patrick Dempsey dance. What do you love about being on the road? Uh, well, I, I know no other life anymore, really. <laughs> um, I, the road is, the road just gives you that kind of, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing like going home. Yeah. You know, especially nowadays, but the road just kind of gives you that like, continued sense of accomplishment I mean everything yeah. is extreme I mean you're either extremely bored or extremely tired or extremely happy but it's fun I mean I'm doing I'm doing the only thing I know to do you know I'm doing what I love and and you know just to be able to be out you know with with all the guys in the band are, are old friends of mine my wife is out with me nice I didn't know you were married how yeah. long have you been married for about a year Wow yeah so and she goes out to every show so that is amazing yeah. no kids yet eh? no kids, no kids. No, no, no. <laughs> what do you think would be your dream musical collaboration at this point in your career i would take any kind of collaboration with with mr ben folds or mr billy joel or or elton john or harry connick in the song indiana mm -hmm. you talk about kind of being scared of be, being famous you question being famous in the right. song where does that come from? Are you truly, do you deal with that issue of fame? Well, I mean, I, I, the, the little that I've, that I've been exposed to, um, to what that song is talking about, you know, I, I think that anybody who's kind of, you know, going into this kind of a business or whatever, you know, you've got to, you've got to have something in the back of your mind. Yeah. You know, you've got to be thinking, how am I going to deal with this? What is it going to be like? You know, um, that song is basically kind of, written I wrote that while I was out here doing a lot of work for the for the record it kind of comes from my you know I was feeling like things were going you know pretty rough at that time I was I was getting down I was uh, doing a lot of writing and I was writing a lot of bad songs <laughs> basically it was what it was I was kind of just thinking you know why don't I just pack up go back to Indiana I'll keep this whole music thing as a dream like it's been you know the last 23 years and I'll be fine, you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll be in Indiana, everything will be as it should, and then I'll just have to, every day I'll have to convince myself that I'm glad that it never happened, you know, so. That sounds like a miserable existence, man. <laughs> What's next for you, John? Next month, this is, I'm really excited about this, I'm going to go out with uh, Johnny Lang. Wow. For about a month. We're actually coming back out here for a little bit. Um, I've never met him, I've yet to see him live. But I've, I've heard his music. I've heard a lot about him. I mean, the guy is a monster. Nice. So, so I'm excited and a little scared. <laughs> so that's what you got. That's what's coming at next. Yeah. Next, how long is this tour going to last for you? I'm out with him uh, for a month. All right. Well, John, it's been great talking to you. Great Likewise. having you on Thank the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. Blaring Out with Eric Blair with John McLaughlin. Signing off. Bye bye. <laughs>